listening to short inspirations from Ralph. Why is there so much pain and suffering in this world? Part 4. We've been looking at the question, why do innocent people suffer? And Jesus' incredible response to that being that that's an opportunity for people to see God, to see the face of God through pain. And we've got to remember that Suffering and evil didn't come from God. It was a direct result of man deciding to live without him. C.S. Lewis said, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks to us in our conscience, but shouts to us in our pains. Suffering is God's megaphone to rouse a deaf world. One of the amazing statements that Paul made And talking to the Romans in chapter 5, verse 3 and 4, he says, We also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. So it's not a matter of suffering or not suffering. It's a matter of having hope or living in a world of hopelessness. Yes, suffering is hard. It's tough. It can hurt at such a deep level, but it's more than a cerebral problem. We are probably more intent on finding help and relief than on finding an explanation. And we certainly don't want someone giving us his or her idea of the right answer in an unfeeling way. In fact, the Bible recognizes the need to go beyond explaining pain and encourages us to mourn with those who mourn. Romans 12, 15. It's a practice Jesus himself modelled. People going through dark valleys are looking for compassion, not just pat answers. So, where is God? Doesn't he intervene? Actually, he does in a sense. He's put at work in the world a restraining power that is buffering the effects of evil. And we see that in 2 Thessalonians 2, 7, where it says, For the mystery of of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains, there it is, will do so until he is taken out of the way. And were that restraint removed, we would have true hell on earth. John Wenham, in his book, The Goodness of God, said this, the marvel is, in the biblical view, not that men die for their sins, but that we remain alive in spite of them. And when you think about it, it's not only that there is a sort of a restraining order by the hand of God against evil, but that God holds everything to do with our earth in a delicate balance. If our planet's too close to the sun, its temperature soars and liquid water boils into gas. If it's too far away, almost everything freezes. Our planet is in the Goldilocks zone. Everything is just right in this great oasis that we live in. It says in Matthew 5:45, He, the Father in heaven, causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. You see, he restrains evil and he sets us up in a planet that protects us from what could happen. And the very reason that he does this is because He values us incredibly highly and he wants us to be his own. And in the book of Malachi, in the Old Testament, Malachi 3 verse 17, it says this, They will be my people, says the Lord of hosts. On the day when I act in judgment, here it is, they will be my own special treasure. I will spare them as a father spares an obedient child. Wow. This is the reason for everything. This is why everything happens and why we were born. They shall be mine, he says. His love is absolutely overwhelming for us. My plea to you, through the pain and the suffering and the unfairness and the tears, is to call on his name, because it's very clear that if you seek him, you will find him. God bless you.